Germany, just as all of the other member states of NATO uh, during the NATO summit meeting in Wales committed itself to reach the 2% goal over a period of 10 uh, years. And just as the Defence Minister has already assured you, we will do everything we can in order to um, fulfil this commitment. But today, on behalf of President Trump, I bring you this assurance. The United States of America strongly supports NATO and will be unwavering in our commitment to this transatlantic alliance. The promise to share the burden of our defense has gone unfulfilled for too many for too long, and it erodes the very foundation of our alliance. As of this moment, the United States and only four other NATO members meet this basic standard. The President of the United States expects our allies to keep their word, to fulfill this commitment, and for most, that means the time has come to do more. The post-war generation rose to their challenge. Now we must rise to ours because a strong Europe cannot mean Europe alone. Just as I don't believe America first means America alone. We understand that Minsk agreements are dead. What's your opinion about that and where do we take it from here? The Minsk agreement is the only basis that we have in order to keep up this channel of communication, trying to bring a solution to the problems forward. I am absolutely against um, throwing something out that might still be useful uh, when it's the only thing you actually have and that has a certain degree of hope connected to it. We would love to fight together with Russia against international terrorism. Uh, we would love to establish sensible trade relations to work on, a, on a, some kind of a union from Vladivostok uh, to, uh, to uh, Europe. But we cannot give this up. Um, we don't only owe this to Ukraine, we owe it also to many, many other countries. The United States will continue to hold Russia accountable even as we search for new common ground, which, as you know, President Trump believes can be found. Predictability and good well-wishing towards all countries, first and foremost to our neighbors, have always been a part of our politics. There is no alternative to implementation of Minsk package of measures through direct dialogue between Kiev, Lugansk and Donetsk. That's the position of Russia. Well, I think peace is only possible when none of the parties to the conflict think they can win. I'm not sure we are yet there in Syria. I'm afraid that some might still think, and I think it's a total illusion, that they might win that war. We have to concentrate as a European Union more on the really important challenges, um, competitiveness, jobs, internal security, external security. The European Union is much, much stronger than we Europeans realize, and it's much more indispensable to Europeans and to the world than we realize most of the times. It's not charity. Investing in development, investing in the Sustainable Development Goals, investing in humanitarian is not charity. It's an investment, a selfish investment in our own security. Multilateralism is the way to counter nationalism. What does that mean for us as Europeans? I would advise optimism, but we should be prepared. We should hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. We can assure our European partners, and here I'm uh, borrowing from a quotation by Mario Draghi, will do whatever it takes to make sure that Europe is not divided.